Paimon was scared to death when the chain broke. Paimon was sure something had gone horribly wrong. Magic is a performance art. A magician has to get creative to keep the audience on tenterhooks. That's our job. So I tweaked Caesar's original setup a little to keep it fresh. I was honestly a little nervous during the live performance. The thought of falling, suddenly feeling weightless, seeing the sky and the ground spinning and spinning. Sometimes, I can't help but wonder what Caesar thought in those final moments. Did he regret taking Gemma and Lorenzo on? Or did he believe that it was his own slip-up right until the end? You know, Paimon's been wanting to ask you about something ever since we were in Caesar's workshop. You learned magic from Caesar once, didn't you? When was that? After I joined the House of the Hearth. To be honest, Lynette and I had an agenda when we approached him. I told you about my past before, remember? As a young boy, I survived by secretly learning magic from street performers. I'd watch their tricks and try to figure out how they were done. But I quickly realized that observation alone could only get me so far. What I saw was the polished final performance, but the rigorous training they put in behind the scenes remained invisible to me. I needed to learn how to improve my sleight of hand, hone my misdirection skills, and make niftier props. We were gifted enough that we'd made some progress by ourselves, but without proper guidance from a professional magician, we quickly plateaued. So that's why you sought Caesar out? Yes. We figured there was no harm in asking, but it took us by surprise that he was so willing to teach us. In all, we only spent ten short days together, but he was very good to us. By contrast, we hid so many things from him. For instance, when he asked why I wanted to learn magic, I answered, it's my passion. But in truth, there was already a lot more to the story by then. After being taken in by an aristocrat for our magic talent, then betrayed soon after, this was no longer about me doing what I loved. What amazed me was how the lie escaped my lips even as I was hesitating over whether to tell him the truth. Trust is a beautiful thing. Sadly, I'd forgotten how to trust by then. Lenny... Still worried about the way I feel? <laughs> you really are a gentle soul, aren't you? But don't worry, I'm used to it now. From the mansions of the Elite to the House of the Hearth, lies and selfishness have followed me and Lynette everywhere we go. After Caesar went on tour, we became busy with our missions. The next we heard of him was that he'd fallen to his death, and was now declared to be the Phantom Weasel. That night, I remembered his smile. But as I lay there, I didn't know what to say to him. To keep secrets is to put up walls. The longer you keep them up, the less you let people in. Then, one day, you look around and realize your life is like an empty auditorium after a show, full of seats once occupied by all the people who left. <sighs> but I guess that's the price we have to pay. You only realize how much someone really meant to you when you lose them completely. That's why I was so confident this would hurt Gemma. Because... I felt it for myself. Yeah, cheer up, Lenny. We've had to say our fair share of goodbyes during our journey, too. But whatever happens, Paimon always believes in what tomorrow brings. Delicious food, fun toys, and the traveler by my side. Paimon just needs to focus on things like this, and all the unhappy stuff goes right out the window. Um, you know, Traveler, doesn't that kind of make you Paimon's truth? Exactly. It's the same for me and Lynette. We are the truest thing each other has in the world, and nothing can replace that. Life has taken plenty from us, like it did from Gemma. But at least it left us with each other. That's what gave us the strength to get through the darkest days. That's why the darkness never consumed me and why it never will. 
Maybe we live in the shadows too, but we remember every precious ray of light that shines through. All right, time to lighten this conversation up a little. What did you think of the show tonight? Were you happy with it? It was amazing! Paimon just wishes we hadn't been so distracted with the Gemma situation. We spent most of our time in the Opera House just talking and pretty much missed the entire first half of the show. Um, Lenny, could you do just one more trick for us? Whoa, that's a bit of a tall order, I'm afraid. The show's just finished, so my sleeves are decidedly card-free right now. Aw, come on! Surely you can think of something. The Lenny Paimon knows can do anything if he puts his mind to it. Oh, all right then. I'll give it a go, but only because it's you. Watch closely. I have a flower in my hand. You liar! There's nothing in your hand! We ain't going along with this! Huh? My goodness, you're right! But I could have sworn I brought one here with me. Hmm... Okay, try this. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Three, two, one! Now, have another look around. Maybe the flowers appeared somewhere else. Really? Let's see. Wow, there it is! Oh, this is a different flower from the last time, right? This one's called, um, oh yeah, a rainbow rose. But more importantly, Paimon has to know how the trick is done. Please, Lenny, pretty please? Well, if you want to learn magic, you'll have to start by addressing me as teacher. Since you asked so nicely, I'll share one little tip with you. Namely, the student of magic cannot solely rely on others being prepared to reveal their secrets. You have to observe, think, and find the answers for yourself. Is that it? Ah, look at the time. We shouldn't linger here too long. Thanks again for coming to see my show. I bid you both good night. I look forward to seeing you again. <sighs> All right, fine. See ya. Shall we head back now, too? <laughs> Paimon can't wait to read the steam bird tomorrow. Paimon bets Linny and Caesar will be plastered all over it. Let's head to the steam bird's offices tomorrow morning and see what we can find out. <laughs>